Welcome to part 61 of Final Fantasy 15, and yeah, the next couple of parts is going to be side quests, but there'll be side quests that will actually help us on the game more level, but money, and also new weapons. Speaking of which, I turned in some carrots to Tony to get the Valiant, one of many weapons that Tony has in his possession. A total of five, if I'm not mistaken. Because he also has the Plunderers, the Absorb Shield, and I think he has another weapon on him too. I don't remember all of them. But I do know this. You will need to get some parts for all of them. And some of them can be easily found from the hunts that you get from the restaurants, and others you may have to actually beat up certain enemies for them. I actually do have the pieces needed in order for me to get Prompto's ultimate weapon, the Valiant. And by the way, I still have the chainsaw over at Sid's place. Yeah, the circular saw, sorry. That's what I meant to say. <clears throat> we have that over at Sid's place. And, um... We need to still get that back. But in order for us to do that, we're going to have to actually rest. But first, I'm going to turn in that and the... I'm going to turn in the Valiant and the Bio Blaster. So we'll eventually get the Circular Saw. It's going to be a while before we get that anyway. Because there's going to be quests that I'm going to do. Now... Bear one thing in mind, because of the fact that it is now Chapter 9, the Adamant Toys uh, event is open, but we have to do that event in order for the Adamant Toys hunt to be unlocked. The event is no... I mean, the event itself is not a problem. You could do that any time, which I'll probably do at Part 67, I do believe. Yeah, I think it was Part 67 I did that. <clears throat> But the actual hunt itself, I'm not doing until after I beat this game. So, that and Castle Mark is going to be the only other things I'm going to be doing. And about a couple other side quests that will only show up after you beat a certain portion of the game. Which is the rest of the game. In a way, yes. That's what I meant to say. So, with that said, there is a long loading screen and I should cut that out and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll see you guys in a little bit. And we are back ladies and gentlemen after that long, long, long loading screen. I had to cut that out because it was way too long and speaking of computer problems that is probably why you haven't seen many Final Fantasy uh, 15 videos coming out and that's because of the fact that one I had to have an update that took one and a half days for me to finish on my computer. And that update pretty much prevented my laptop. Well, it had to be done. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to use the OneDrive on uh, my computer. Because my Xbox One also had a Microsoft update as well. So basically, all Microsoft products had a Windows 10 update which is stupid Be I mean I understand that it, it's the re uh, remove bugs and stuff like that but it's stupid to completely lock out players on the Xbox one from using the OneDrive on their computer because they don't have the original version and that constitutes where the problem lies. The security update prevents anyone, well on the Xbox One, prevents anyone from using the OneDrive on the uh, PC. So I had to update my PC. And then on top of that I had to do a, the whole thread of recordings. I mean, I have to fix some things on my channel too. That's another thing. But other than that, I had to record a whole thread, basically the entirety of how I was going to do all the, most of the quests before I actually get to the main story of Chapter 9. 
And the main story does not start until chapter 70. Oh, and by the way, Prompto wants to take a picture. And it's close. I mean, this is a lot of explanation. I mean, I know Final Fantasy 15 isn't the most watched thing on my channel right now. But at this point, I'd rather not have this lingering about for three years like Final Fantasy X-2. I'd rather not have that. Anyway, let's go and take that photo for Prompto. But yes, we may be wandering around, Altisha. I promise you we're going to get to some quests and some destinations today because I actually uh, made sure to check to see if I, I do do that. And yes, I do do that. I mean, it's a long editing process. And also, I had to edit out to actually make this a 29-minute video because originally it was like 31 minutes of me wandering around Altitia, so I took out the wandering around in the DVR and also took out the long loading time in the DVR as well, so there's that. Anyway, let's just go over and find that dress. And for the record, this is actually a 10 minute part, I mean a 10 minute portion one of them anyway, that I was uh, trying to find things in Altitia and it may end up abruptly cut cutting when I get to where the dress is actually is. And there's a reason for that. The reason why it abruptly cuts is because of the fact they hit the 10 minute mark obviously. So all we practically need to do is go get ourselves some uh, magic because there's always going to be a supply of magic every time you sleep and you go over to Magaho's to get the re procurements replaced. So you can just keep stocking up on magic and filling up your magic flasks, which is what I'm going to end up doing. like before the story, well, before I actually go to the main story. Oh, by the way, this is the painting that we need to go to. And it's right next to all this magic here. The only reason why that's not actually moving or not activating or anything of that nature is because we haven't got the hunt for it yet. Which is at Magahos, which is where we're supposed to go. But... A wedding dress just so happens to be more important than anything else. You think with all the grand and exuberant stores, the one store that you're looking for is right down there. And of course, I'm going to have to stop because that was a 10 minute mark of the first portion of the thread. Uh, yeah, basically it was the first portion of that recording because 10 minute DVR recordings. And also, don't mind the... Uh, resolution flare. That happened a lot. One hell of a crowd. And that's the dress. My word. Everyone looks so happy. And it's all because of this one dress. Yeah. Real glad for you that Lady Luna Freya is safe and sound. Yeah. Well, that settles it. You gotta make it happen. Become a symbol of the peace. After we tie up all the loose ends, let's think about the ceremony. A fine idea. Yeah, I'll think about it. And with that, the new side quest is done. Now, it's time for us to go to Magaho. And for those of you who have not played the Mogul Chocopo Festival, which unfortunately the last day to do that was last September, Magaho is a restaurant where you could gain a good number of Chocomog medallions, which you could use to buy many stuff to craft weapons for Sid. Uh... 
I actually had a playthrough of that, and there were some things that was glitched in the game. And, of course, the Chocomog Festival is completely gone. However, there's still the Assassin's Festival, which I'm going to do in December. And that'll be right before I beat the game. So, yeah, there is that. So I'm getting as much side quests done as I humanly possibly can. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be 86, but I think the parts are going to be up to 110. I'm going to push it that far. If I can actually manage time. Splendid. Where are we off to? One thing is perfectly clear, though. You might want to talk to this guy. You're not from here. Alessio's my name. Coin collecting's my game. Oracle Ascension coins specifically. Have you any? If you're willing to part with some, I'll gladly trade you a token of equal value. So as you can wholeheartedly see here, he sells the best equipment in the game for Oracle Ascension coins. And the best part about it is, Oracle Ascension coins can be uh, found on the ground courtesy of Gladio, or they could be found on the ground in various parts of uh, the game. So, picking up these Oracle Ascension coins would bring you to, <clears throat> and bringing him to, and bringing him to his guy to actually get you some things like ribbons. Ribbons are fantastic. However, they do not protect you from death. And they certainly don't protect you from petrification. I don't know why, but it just doesn't. It's as if uh, Square Enix has a thing about people protecting themselves from instant death. Not knowing that instant death is arguably one of the worst stats to ever exist. Believe me, 12 abuses that to no end. As much as I like 12, I love 12. One of my favorite games in the series. It abuses instant death to no end. And that's really damn awful for it to do. And to make things worse, Golden Age came out. And... Not Golden Age, Zodiac Age, sorry, came out not too long ago. And, uh... From what I look at on many playthroughs of Golden Age, the only thing that were not changed is the fact that there's still not a water spell past water. There's not a earth spell at all. And also, Garavagan still sucks. Not to mention, there's no protection from death. But somehow, a Kira and a Bubble Moat ended up being put in the game. Oh, we're here at Magaho, too, by the way. Welcome to Okoro, lads. Sid mentioned you'd be dropping in. Waskamama, as you've gathered. My word, you've grown, little prince. Hmm. Uh, so this is your maiden visit. Enjoying it so far? You doubtless have many questions, so ask away. This country is a part of the Empire, isn't it? Oh, you're wary. I understand. But there's no need to jump at every shadow. Just be aware that the terms of our independence grant the Empire free reign to come and go as they please. We'll bear that in mind. It's admittedly a one-sided arrangement. Most everything we do requires Niflheim's permission. And they wouldn't knowingly permit the Oracle to appear before the public. How our government spun that is quite a mystery. Now, it does not matter which question you ask first, so long as you ask a question, because the plot isn't going to move along until then. You really think Luna will make an address? If every recent radio broadcast is to be trusted, absolutely. Where is Lady Luna Freya? In the city somewhere. But no one has caught so much as a glimpse of her. The media has been conspicuous in its silence on the matter, which speaks volumes of government intervention. That certainly explained the rumors of disgruntled Imperial officers leaving the city. S 
see, see lots of nifs around here? We do, sometimes even at my place. Theirs is a familiar presence, and the citizens don't think much of it. Though the High Commander did cause a stir when he showed up the other day. Ravis. So soon after they fell the Archean and Lucis, his arrival fuels rumors that they will next come to Altisha. The Empire's not content ruling all the land. They want the heavens as well. Has anything changed with Leviathan? For now, it's business as usual at port. But word is the government will soon open the altar of the Tide Mother. In preparation for the right. Ah, but on the other hand, they're scrambling to stockpile emergency provisions. This begs the question, if they're anticipating that the Hydrian will wreak havoc, why would they allow the right to proceed? Well, if you need anything else, you know where to find me. Thanks, appreciate it. <laughs> My dear Camellia, it's been a while. I heard about your distinguished guests. Ah, you've an ear for gossip. And this Angela Lansbury looking person is Camellia. Gentlemen, I won't waste your time. My name is Camellia Clostra. First Secretary of the Accordo Protectorate. You should know, we have Lady Luna Freya in our care. And the Empire demands we surrender her. What? Yet I am loath to acquiesce unless we stand to profit. Hence I've come to discuss terms with the King of Lucis. If you've a mind to talk, come to my estate. She can be oblique at the best of times, but I assure you, her heart is in the right place. Oh, okay. At any rate, you must be weary from your journey. Might I suggest you seek your beds for now and ponder matters anew in the morning? Yeah, I think we'll do just that. Unfortunately, we've got things to do. One of which is to actually get information on the painting that Vive wanted us to take a picture of. Your heart is yours to so we'd have to actually talk to Wes twice in order for us to actually get access to all of uh, the hunts and also the procurements here. As well as the new food menu items. I do believe only one of them you actually can uh, buy that Ignis will get a recipe from and it's the very expensive one that's here okay now that we've got what we need we're gonna have to get the petition but first these are all the new items we have the most expensive meal in the entirety of the game is a meal that costs three hundred thousand dollars that will up all stats and that will pretty much give you uh protection from all elements and also double the experience points or should i say up the five experience points 500 percent that is a good meal however the lasagna is pretty good too the thing is ignis does not actually uh Uh, take this down as a recipe because for some reason we don't have the pr appropriate ingredients. So let's talk to Wes and get the hunt for the painting that we need to deal with. Yay! We have a total of uh, five hunts. Okay, I, I see, I see. So let's get this painting right here. Hey, 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 come on, come on. Go over there and get this painting. Unfortunately, folks, this is before the latest update that happened earlier this week, actually. Wishing you lads a safe so I still at the time was doing hunts one at a time. So now we're going to have to go back to where we came from. Splendid. Where are we off to? 
and go and find the painting. I know where it is, and I should skip there, but I do believe the uh, 10 minute mark of the DVR is going to happen somewhere around this point, and it'll do that Gentlemen, for me. It has been a pleasure. One thing is perfectly clear, ladies and gentlemen. I keep saying that line. I'm going to stop. But what is clear is we need to get that painting. And that will complete V. That will get us like 25,000 gil. Even though originally this whole entire mission used to be 100,000 gil. They probably did that because you could gain like... 200,000 gil from doing time patrol quests. I mean, time quests, sorry, that's what I meant to say. And earning quest points to uh, get uh, 200,000 quest points or 100,000 gil, regardless of the fact that you do have that ability, they still should not have changed that because what if people don't do quest? That's the thing. What if people don't do quest? And I think they may have made an upgrade to where if you don't do a quest, you don't get any points now. There's no reason for them to change the original hunt. Oh, and by the way, talk to the guard. He'll let you through. Because the hunt that we have to do is at night. So before we get any closer to that painting... I'm going to change up my uh, armor, and for good reason. I do not want to be turned into a freaking frog. This particular enemy turns your party members into frog. Frog sucks. And you will be as good as dead if you happen to be turned into a frog. So, let's go on ahead and kill this thing. So, there's the Lakshmi. And as soon as Whoa. Prompto takes the picture... Big. What's that? Is it fun? Or not... Whoa. No friggin' way! This happens! <laughs> oh, yeah! Like I said, this, I this one really is tougher than the Melisite hunt. Because yes, Melisine does have more experience points and have a couple of snakes. This thing has two forms. And of course, uh, it is immune to uh, magic from the looks of it. Anyway. Just simply keep battering it and eventually it'll go down. I think Thunder Magic may hurt it. I'm not sure. I should look that up. But I know for a fact. No, wait, no. Thunder Magic isn't hurting it because I have the Thunderbolt on right now. So it only can uh, take physical damage in its state. I mean, not physical damage. It's going to take, like, fire magic. Unfortunately, I have Unicast, which isn't fire. It's basically fire, ice, and lightning. And there's the second floor. And I'm just going to go on ahead and waylay on this thing and kill it because it needs to die. And with that said, we've got the painting. We've got the picture. Now, let's go talk to Vee. Unfortunately, we won't get the lump sum of money that used to be a part of this picture. And yes, I'm going to keep dwelling on that because they did not have to change that up. They really didn't. So, honestly, we just need to go on ahead and warp back over to uh, Veev to turn this in. But right now, we need to also go to Magaho to get the uh, reward for this hunt. And yeah, by the way, the resolution flares, that's me going into the menu now that I realize it. It tends to happen a lot. That's basically the new update. 
That's me checking on how many uh, minutes I have left on my recording. As I'm trying to head over to the boat that takes me over to Mago. And, well, I keep looking at random things that my teammates say, Hey, look, Noct! Check this out, Noct! Yeah, that too can be annoying sometimes. But hey! At least, at least, I'm done with this hunt. Yeah, I'm going to be doing more hunts uh, up in Altitia, but not all of them just yet. There's some that I'm going to have to get stronger to do. Or I'll probably do later on. Before I, like, completely finish off the game for good. I mean, I'll finish the game's story before actually finishing off the game itself. Fantastic. Because there's a lot of things oh, I want to do. And at least have some quests open. So that I could go on ahead and plant carrots or... Just practically gain up experience points. Whatever the case... We're here back at Magaho, and also, I want to bear one fact over here about the shops that sell food. They are obscenely expensive, and that could be a pain in the ass. Alright, my hunter rank went up, and I got a mega elixir for it. So, what brings you here today? So, let's see. I can go on ahead and add another hunt to it. And I'll probably deal with that in the next part. It's in your hands now, lads. Cause we're gonna stick around for a little while. Teamwork is the key to success. Of course, all the hunts here come out at night. Every last one of them. So it's really hard to actually see any demons in the day. And that also begs the question, if there are a lot of holy stones lighting up the place. Why are there demons? That begs a very big question. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't noticed, there's one particular stop that was not put on there during the Chocobo Muggle Festival, and that was the stop that would bring you over to the floating market. Now that the festival's over, we could go there. But... I'm going to go, I'm going to do some shopping, and I'll probably do that off screen. I'll see you guys next time, when I continue doing more hunts in Altitia. Which begs the question, how come there's not enough holy stones to stave off demons? And there's demons here. That is going to be a rather ambiguous question because it may have something to do with the annoying uh, nefs being in the area so with that said see you guys next time